We have seen that exporting report data into Excel can be accomplished by simply choosing the export option in either reporting format, standard or custom. Keep in mind that when incorporating this method of export, the data is going to be static. When you want to view the most current data, you'll have to go back and perform a new export. What if you wanted to access the current data basically on demand? You can do this by importing a data feed directly into Excel for use in a power pivot table and pivot chart. Doing this allows you to expose current K2 data continuously. In part three of this tutorial, we'll learn how to do this by building a custom report with Microsoft Excel. Beginning with step one in this section of the tutorial, we will generate a data feed using K2's endpoint service, then import that data feed into Excel. A word of caution before we get moving with this tutorial. The name of the K2 server and base URL for web services used in this sample is going to be k2.denalix.com, and this is based on the standard K2 provided virtual machine image. If you are attempting this exercise in another environment, you will probably need to adjust the server name appropriately. Check with your K2 administrator to find out what the URL is for your environment. The first task in this step is to test the Smart Object Services URL in a browser to confirm we can connect to and read K2 Endpoint Services. We also need to confirm that all of the Endpoint Services are being returned. From your web browser, open a new tab, put in the following URL, and be sure that you get the port correctly, it's 8888. And as I mentioned earlier, your URL may be different if you're not using a K2 virtual machine. When the page loads up, your screen should look similar to mine. Scroll through the results returned and double check to make sure that there's URL entries for the workflow reports, workflow general processes. We are specifically looking for a URL that looks like the following. It will have the domain name with the port 8888 and run down to the workflow general group showing the process instance list method endpoint. If there is not a URL that matches this service or you are not getting anything back from the server, you will need to edit the K2 host service configuration file to enable this service. I won't go into this in too much detail for the video portion of this lesson, but to fix this, we have posted the necessary steps to edit the configuration file and restart the K2 service Write in task B in the documentation guide for part three, step one of this tutorial. You can see on my screen here, the notes section that lays out the steps. Be sure to make a backup of the configuration file before you make changes to it. Basically, what you're going to tell K2 is you want the workflow managed endpoints to be included and available in the environment. Once you have confirmed that these endpoint URLs exist, you're ready to move on to the next step. Going forward, this URL is going to be the basis for our data feed in Excel with a minor edit. Let's take a moment now to launch Microsoft Excel. You can use your shortcut if you have one on your desktop for it, or go into the Microsoft Office group under All Programs in the Start button menu and load it up. Remember, if you're on a K2 VM, this may take a moment to load up, and you can go ahead and click through the licensing message and close it. Let's create a new blank workbook. Then click the Power Pivot tab over here on the menu bar and select the Manage Menu option under the Data Model group. This window may take a few seconds to load up, so I'll pause the video here for the sake of time. When the Manage Power Pivot window finally opens up, you can select the option from other sources under the Get External Data grouping of buttons. When this window opens, you can scroll down to the Data Feeds group in this list and select Other Feeds from the options available, then click Next. For the friendly connection name, let's enter in K2 Data Feed. Then let's enter in the following URL into the data feed URL field. This is the one that we looked at earlier. You can copy and paste this from the student guide tutorial page for this exercise. Just make sure you take the URL only up to where it says Adam with no extra text beyond that. Then click the test the connection button. This may also take a few seconds if it's the first time you're hitting the URL. Now, if this connection test fails, 
you can click on the advanced button here on this window and then change the include atom elements option from auto to true and then test it again. The connection should be successful at this point. That looks pretty good for mine. Let's click next and notice the entry in this window for our data source here. You can click finish to complete the data feed configuration and then close the import wizard. You should now see your power pivot table with K2 reporting data. In review, using a data feed allows you to create external reports and charts using K2 data. The data feed is live, meaning that you can simply refresh your Excel tables and charts to view the current reporting content. As we configured the data feed, we first confirmed the connection by testing the URL in a browser and recall the data returned with the Smart Object Services endpoint web service information. Depending on the environment you are working in, K2 provides data connections to many different types of endpoint services, including SharePoint, CRM, workflow reports, and much more. This ability to connect to K2 data sources provides a wide range of options for retrieving and using K2 data in external applications. With step two of part three, we will create a pivot chart using the power pivot data returned from our data feed in the previous step. This chart will display a count of current status values for process instances. In other words, it will show counts of active, completed, error, etc. In this step, be sure you're ready to return to K2 Workspace and action one of the active leave request workflow process instances. Then we will refresh our pivot chart to confirm that the action is displayed correctly in Excel. If you're coming in from step one, you should still be in the Power Pivot table view inside Excel. While in here, click the Pivot Table button and select Pivot Chart. Then let's select to drop it in a new worksheet and click OK. The pivot chart we are going to configure will show the status values for all processes. We want to see how many processes have completed, how many are active, and even how many are in an error state. Moving into the Pivot Chart Fields pane, let's expand the list options and drag the status into the legend box. Then let's take the process name and drag it into the sum box. Your pivot chart should look like mine on the screen here. This data is coming directly from the Power Pivot table as the data source, and remember that is the data feed from K2. In the next task, we will update one of the leave request process instances, then return to the pivot chart and refresh it. Because this is a live data feed, the change will be reflected immediately in Excel. Make a note of the number of active processes first in your environment. In the chart on my screen, this value is 3. Again, your chart values are most likely going to be a little bit different. Also, do not exit Excel at this time because we will be returning to the pivot chart shortly. To save some time, let's redirect one of the manager approval work list items back to ourselves. If you are on a K2 virtual machine, that's going to be the administrator account most likely. Then we can quickly action the request from K2 Workspace. If you do prefer, feel free to open Outlook for the destination user for one of your tasks. This is typically one of the managers. You can action this request from there using Smart Actions. I'll flip over to K2 Workspace because I already have it open. And then we'll navigate to the work list category. You can do this by hovering over the Management menu option here at the top, and then select Management Console. Go down to the K2 Server Group, it should be the Server Name Group right here, and open up Workflow Server, and select Work Lists. When you click on the Work Lists option, the Work List Filter pane should open. Enter in Leave Request for the process full name, and click Search. You should see a list of active leave request work list items displayed on this window. Put a check in the box to the left of one of the active work list items to select it. I'll select the SmartForms training request and then click redirect. Next, you should see the search for user screen open up. On my screen, I'll enter in administrator. You can do this if you're on one of the K2 virtual machines and then click the search icon. After seeing the administrator account pop up in the results pane, check the box to the left of the administrator name to select it and click OK. 
This work list item has now been redirected to the administrator account where we can go and action it directly from K2 Workspace. Let's go back to the K2 Workspace landing page by clicking the home button in the navigation bar up here on the left. We should now see the work list item for administrator displayed. We can put a check in the box to the left of the folio and then action the request using an option from the batch action dropdown list here at the top. Click OK twice to complete this action. Now that we have actioned the request, the process instance will have completed in the system. Let's go back over to our pivot chart and refresh it in Excel. We should see the count for completed instances go up by one, and actually the count for active instances should go down by one. This will demonstrate the live data feed configuration. So click on Excel to display the pivot chart, Click once inside the chart, right click, select refresh data, and that looks good. The chart is refreshed with the new counts for active and completed process instances, so we are good to go. In review, in this step we created a pivot chart from the process instance power pivot table. The power pivot table displays live data from K2 via a data feed. We demonstrated the live feed by updating a leave request work list item in K2 Workspace. Then we refreshed the chart data view in Excel. This concludes the tutorials for standard reports and custom reports in K2. We hope this gives you the foundation you need to continue on and build meaningful reports within K2 in your organization.